Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership is a, a sportsman's group that has spent a lot of time down here in coastal Louisiana and across the Gulf Coast focusing on coastal restoration efforts, especially how oil spill recovery dollars are spent. Here in Louisiana, one of the most vital coastal restoration projects is the mid Barataria sediment diversion. That, along with the mid Breton sediment diversion, are going to be designed to work in conjunction with other coastal restoration projects included in the Louisiana Coastal Restoration Master Plan. They're designed to work together to help put the pieces of Louisiana's coastal marsh back together. We have to try to expedite all of these diversions, or well, we can't live here. It's plain and simple. We've already lost the area greater than the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is 1,906 square miles. We've lost over 2,000 square miles in the last 50 years. At that rate, we won't be here anymore. We don't have the time to wait. So mid is a is a project similar to the Carnarvon and Davis Pond diversions, which I think folks are much uh, more familiar with, but much larger, much different type of project. We're building a project or designing a project that's going to get sand and water from the river, bed load sand and water to build land. Uh, Carnarvon and Davis Pond are freshwater diversions and much smaller and designed for a different purpose. mid Terrier is going to be designed to build land and mimic the natural processes of deltaic formation. The mid Barataria diversion is going to be built around the town of Myrtle Grove. It's going to be a two mile long channel that comes out of the Mississippi River and into the marshes on the west side of the river that right now don't have a connection to the sediment and the water coming out of the river. And it's going to be operated to deliver maximum amount of sediment when the sediment load is the greatest in the river. When there isn't as much sediment in the river, the flow can be cut back to reflect what's going on in the Mississippi River Channel, just like you would have if there was a natural connection to the river. You know, the Mississippi River and the sediment it delivered is what built all of this in the first place. And losing that connection is why we've lost so much habitat, especially on the west side of the Mississippi River. Right now, without the diversions, our fishery is depleting. The number one fishery in North America, and it's depleting every day because there's no edge, there's no aquatic vegetation to save the small fish from predation. And what happens when you open that diversion, it, the, the sediment and the fresh water comes in and as it slows down, where there's no turbidity, it grows aquatic vegetation. That aquatic vegetation is where all the shrimp and fish and crabs and, and all the juveniles of every species of fish, that's where they raise up, that's where they get away from predation, they can hide in that. Well, so once you start getting aquatic vegetation and all this edge built up, it acts as a nursery for all of this. Our, our fishery will start coming back immediately. Closer to the river, you'll have brim and sockeye and bass. And as it goes into a brackish water, you'll start getting redfish. And then when it changes over, right in the brackish is where the, the speckled trout will spawn. And then when you get out toward the coast, that's where all your, your coastal fish will be. And it just returns the ecosystem back to normal. So a lot of work has been put into finding the right location for these projects. Specific to mid Barataria, we found a sandbar in the river that will feed it the maximum amount of sand and sediment possible. And that's important um, because when you're investing as much money and as much effort into a project like this, you really want to get the biggest bang for your buck. In addition, we have to find the right location of the basin too. We've identified one of the largest the, one of the areas in Barataria Basin that has uh, undergone the most land loss, most open water, most habitat converted into open water. That's, that's conducive to an area that needs a sediment version like that to rebuild and resustain this area. In addition, this project is actually in the proximity of several large scale marsh creation projects that we're actually in the process of planning and, and, and designing right now. In addition, the long distance sediment pipeline corridor is directly to the north of the mid Barataria. Uh, sediment diversion outfall. So we have a lot of different projects going on in this area that the sediment diversion will actually help and sustain and make them better. In addition to building the mid Barataria diversion and eventually the mid Breton diversion, Louisiana has identified about a dozen areas in the river channel itself where they can operate a dredge and pick sediment up and move it into the marsh on the east and west side of the river. These projects where they're going to directly build marsh are going to be designed to work in conjunction with the diversions. They can build marsh, establish the marsh platform, have the vegetation start growing on projects that they're building where the fresh water is coming out, and that way those marsh creation projects will be much more sustainable. They'll have a much longer lifespan than projects that are built in areas that don't have 
uh, access to the resources coming out of a diversion. So the, the project in itself is uh, put in place to, to perform a very specific goal, and that's to reintroduce sediment into an area that is starved of sediment, but at one time was getting replenished by river sediment every year. And these wetlands that buffer the city of New Orleans, that buffer some of these other communities, are now the, the, the Gulf of Mexico is right up to their levees. So we have to rebuild these wetlands. So in addition to the infrastructure that's already there, Louisiana is amongst the leader in the nation in oil and gas exploration, fisheries, commerce. So this project restores or sustains all of that. And that's why it's important, not only to Louisiana and the residents of Louisiana in the areas on this part of the state, but to the whole country. Um, the oil and gas industry is huge and it's, it's driven by Louisiana and we need to protect it. Man, you can see how much heavier this soil is than the soil on the west side of the river where it's all organics. I mean, this has got some silt in it. You can feel the silt. This is some heavy clay. You can see it's a different color than the soil on the other side of the river. Uh, it definitely, it's, it's got organic material in it. You know, that the grass beds and the marsh on this side soak up a lot of that organics that are coming out of the Mississippi River, but this is heavy, heavy soil. It's a lot more firm. The boat gets stuck in it a lot easier, unfortunately, but I mean, this is, this is good heavy material to build a marsh platform. I'm such a proponent for, for diversions because I have diversions that I live in every day. I have 19 small diversions between Austrica and Baptiste Colette that flow a total of 450,000 cubic feet per second when the river's flowing. And I see how it's building land. I see the fishery is so much better over there. I see the, the, the waterfowl is it's null and void on the west side, but on the on the east side, that's where all the waterfall uh, winter because that's where the aquatic vegetation is. So I've seen all these things in my 39 years of guiding. So therefore, I made my opinions based on on what I've learned and what I see. And diversions are definitely the way to go because you can do you can do marsh creation where you pump sediment is very very expensive to do. And as soon as you pull that pipe up, guess what? It starts subsiding. It starts eroding. And a few years later, you have to pump it again. Whereas in a diversion, it will keep growing. As long as that river is attached to it, it keeps growing and depositing sediment. And eventually, it makes a bayou and starts depositing it in another place. It's the natural way that Louisiana was built, and that's the way to build it back because you only have to do it once, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. You don't have to go back and try it. Another thing, marsh creation, what does it do? It's instant gratification for, for storm surge but what habitat does it make? Maybe some for some rabbits or some nesting birds, maybe. But when you take sand and make a beach, you just covered up all the habitat. You covered up the shrimp and the crabs and the oysters. You covered up everything with that sediment. So it doesn't really build habitat like a diversion will. The natural way that the Mississippi built Louisiana is the way to go back. It's, it's beneficial for every single thing. The mid barataria sediment diversion on the west side of the Mississippi River uh, is a cornerstone coastal restoration project. Without that diversion operating, it's gonna be impossible to take full advantage of the resources that are available to help restore coastal Louisiana. Right now, we've kicked off the environmental and permitting phase. We're, we're just in the beginning phases of the EIS process. Uh, we're actually soliciting proposals for the engineering and design phase. We hope to have an engineer on board later this summer. And the construction phase is unique for this project because we're actually going to hire a construction contractor right now and bring them on and integrate them into the design team. That's unique in terms of most CPRA projects and really any state project. Most projects, you design a project and bid it, then hire your contractor at the very end. The largest diversion in North America is the Mississippi River and where it comes out in the Delta in Venice. And everybody says, well, it's going to ruin a saltwater fishery. Well, guess where the number one fishery in North America is? Venice, Louisiana. It's right here. You know, it's when the tide comes in, the salt water will come right under there. It's, it's heavier because it's salt laden water. It goes right into the fresh water. You'll see it come up green in your prop wash. I mean, uh, there's, the, the fishery is alive and well. We fish, I used to fish 95 to 100 percent on the west side of the river. Now that fishery is dead because there's no habitat. I'm fishing 95 percent on the east side nowadays. Yeah. Another speckled trout in the Mississippi River water. We want to see the mid barataria diversion move to construction as soon as possible. We want to see in the next five years dirt being turned to construct that project 
And what we hope to see when that project is operated is that it mimics what we see on the east side of the river. We want it to deliver enough sediment that we can build land, we can build headlands, we can have healthy vegetation, natural sediment deposits coming out of it. But then you'll also see that natural variation as the flow in the river reduces later in the year as we move into the summer and the fall, you'll see the flow cut back in the diversion. The speckled trout and the redfish will come back in and what they'll find is a much healthier ecosystem with a lot more habitat and a lot more food after that diversion is operating. You know, people say, well, it's going to create a floaton. Well, that ground is hard as a rock. I can jump up and down and I'll break my poor knees if I do it. You know, there's cattle out there, so, so it's not creating floaton. Uh, they say the water's poison. Well, if you run it through the aquatic vegetation and, float, and filter it through, through all the processes that Mother Nature has, when it comes out, it's pristine, clear water on the other side. No taxpayer dollars are being used to fund any part of these projects, mid Bear Terrier or mid Breton. The projects are funded 100% of by funds affiliated with the BP oil spill. So no, no tax dollars, federal or state, will go into funding any part, construction or design of these projects. TRCP and its partners want to work with the presidential administration. We want to work with the incoming administration at the Corps of Engineers, at NOAA. We want to work with Congress. We want to expedite these permits as quickly as possible. We just don't have time to wait. The creatures that live in this ecosystem, they're adaptable as well. They can move, they can relocate, they can adapt to a healthier ecosystem, and in the long run, they will benefit from the project construction. In the long run, the marine mammals, the fish, the crabs, the shrimp, the things that live in this area will benefit tremendously from having those resources from the Mississippi River return to these marshes. Since the great flood of 1927, the Mississippi River has been levied, which prevented the sediment from flowing into the wetlands, which is the major cause of, of wetland loss in this area. Uh, the good thing is that people were protected from flooding. For decades, we talked about a way to get that sediment out of the river, back into the wetlands. Um, we have the money in place now. We have the process in place now. We have a partnership with the Corps of Engineers. This is our one chance to do it. We have to take advantage of that and move forward. If we build that back and get a ridge and get that marsh built up, that's going to protect Lafitte, St. Charles Parish, uh, the West Bank. All that will be protected more from tidal surge because right now we have nothing protecting us. For every mile of marsh you have, it breaks down the tidal surge one foot. This diversion needs to be built quickly. Uh, it needs to come online. We need to start tapping into the resources of the Mississippi River. We've lost too much land on the west side uh, and we need to get that land back. And with a diversion, we can stop that land loss, we can start rebuilding some of that habitat, we can start bringing life back to the marshes on the west side of the Mississippi River. If not, we don't have a chance. We won't be able to live here if we don't take this action right now.